mean, he starts talking about these really pretty profound principles about the creator of all and the contracts of all graphic reality. And, um, <clears throat> he's telling you these universal principles attributed to God. Like I said, this is the first time he uses that term. That's, a, that's such an overused term, and there's thousands of different labels of God. There's actually 3,000 plus religions in the world. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, which God are you talking about? So, whenever I hear the word God, it usually just sends my hackles off. So, okay. you call it the creator of all, or, you know, it's like, well, that's hard to have another label other than that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or the infinite, you know, something like that. And it makes it much more good. So, source of all life, source of all good, source of all power. So, so these sequences of threes keep showing up relative to this, which is quite interesting. Think about a trident, three prongs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Three colonies, power, wisdom, and love. And as a master who's ascended, you're given three powers by, in order to be in conjunction with that, to transmute evil, assist good, and use discrimination. I, I see <clears throat> this is probably what's achievable for us right now. You know, is doing exactly that. Transmuting evil doesn't mean turning the other cheek. It means converting it from dark into light. Much harder than I thought it was interesting to bring that up. The circle of light is where God, only God dwells. Okay, this is in the ninth dimension you'll see in the film. In the circle of chaos, uh, very close that uh, they talk about between their home and our in the sixth dimension, seventh and eighth are chaos. And then the ninth. So there's this chaotic place that's separate. It's like the, the energy shield to keep everyone else from it. Very interesting. And uh, of course, this is affiliated with the chaos of call and the illusion, whereas awareness is affiliated with fall as the eternal spirit of man. What does that mean, the chaos from the control things? No order. Think of darkness as chaos and order. So I try to come down to chaos. Um, here are the problems for us in getting out of the simulator. No motivation to obtain knowledge. Yeah. It's important. Wisdom and knowledge are the, are the ultimate. Um, he's talking about he did, not even concerned about or seeing the order of things to be able to equate this with the creator. So, atheistic beliefs and attachment to evil. If you, pref if you prefer doing evil over fighting a way to transmute darkness, then you're going to get more of a core in your path. Here we go. Uh, this one's quite interesting to me. That even if you somehow get past the do lot on your way to a room, if you want to go visit, if you somehow sneak through it, and you're kind of wondering, he's telling you it's better to be consumed by fire than <laughs> wasting the trail and then to evaluate your soul. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> Well, think about how many levels there are in the evolution of consciousness. I think there are thousands of them. Well, I'll say that's deep in there. This is, uh, we're going to be talking about that. Oh, I, I love this cinematic unveiling of Poseidon when he demonstrates the first cause on this fire and flames come out. And, <laughs> you know, and then he animates thoughts of all the others. It's just, that's, that's really one of my favorite ones. I love reading that one in the, in the audio. Yeah, you get that must be exhausting for you. I was thinking about that when you have to bring it. It was exhausting. Actually, actually it was just emotionally taxing to oh, emotionally I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Highs and lows and I was experiencing a lot of But the problem was sleep. In the recording your energy is I know it's how it your energy is always on the positive to that whole thing, but it's really really Well, I think I was I mean the fact that I wrote the book in four months and then yeah. Did the audio book a couple of weeks after I released the book, and it was like, wow, just boom, boom. Doing the audio book, I think, was actually harder than writing. All the mistakes in the editing and the audio was yeah. Um, <coughs> um, he, he visits a Rulo in the 14th tablet, talks about seeing people who have ascended there, eight of them were permitted to be there. So the idea that we can go there permanently or temporarily is quite interesting. Is it room or plane? It, it seems to be a plane in the sixth dimension and possibly has material planets there as well. Because he describes homes there and guards and okay. lots of things. <clears throat> and it was interesting in here, he talks about renouncing the birthright to go back there in order to 
choosing to hang out with us, Harry barbarians, and trying to wake us up. So there were multiple instances of him talking about the tradition that coincide with what the dweller told him to do, slide him in, his trip back to uh, the guru when he met Anu and came back and what his mission was relative to those primitive workers. And that, to me, was probably one of the most profound discoveries I ever had. Was, you know, it, it's part of the most fundamental questions. Who we are, where do we come from, what's life mean, and where are we going? You know, so it answered uh, several of those for me. Okay. Um, he gives us a warning this tab, calling on without heck. It's not seeking wisdom. It may reward rope or portal access perfectly. Well, that's kind of scary. You percent five nines. <laughs> I am five nine nine nine. So uh, we talked about the ball as, a, as a, one of the first processes to begin to fan this flame, so that you start taking on more of your energy body and ultimately become a light being. I think that's the progression. That's our job. Turn light into light being. Don't, don't expect it to be an easy path. And the more intense of a mission you have, probably the more darkness you have. Right? <laughs> you know, I got that. I remember. Um, talks about composition, man, physical, astral, mental. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this thing. I'm going to probably just go through this very quickly. But El Casa talks about the energy flowing through your human antenna, your bones, which no one ever talks about, especially in Western medicine. But the idea that you are a human antenna, a meat motor, Coincides with this uh, with this type of diet. That'll be prime. Yeah. yeah. Mine's got three natures. It's ingrained in you to carry the will the great one, arbiter of cause and arbiter of effect. So you not only cause your reality, but you get to arbiter the effect of it as well. I <laughs> like that. Your spiritual self crosses all nine dimensions. Here is a holographic a different model than I had earlier in the diagram to kind of explain everything that follows in these emerald tablets relative to dimensions, portals, uh, worlds within worlds, and the uh, layers that seem to coincide with our band model. So let's start here. Here's the crater of all in the circle of light. Uh, here was the great void before he implemented the law of time and the law of creation. And over here you can see this is a without the uh, manifestation of these, okay? So I drew a line in the middle. And also so that I could segregate off the nine worlds in the world. So if you start out here on Earth, let's go start here first. Um, you have our prison planet with our three layers of the Van Allen belts around it. At the edge of the third layer is the axis of the duot. So this is two dimensions. Here we're in third dimension. This axis point is fourth. That is the fifth, and from this side, there are 15 um, connections from here to the sixth dimension where they say Rulu is. And they can come and go through this portal that Osiris is guarding uh, through any of these 15 connections here. Um, you can see, uh, I made it kind of fun, stop and go. If you've got the ball and the key and you know those words that he gives you, you're allowed to go to a Rulu for a six hour term then you're out of body to experience it. That's what you tell them. Can't go permanently until you lose your body and blah, blah, blah. But right now, you got the opportunity to use an out of body experience with the key that's given to these tablets and visit that place. So, a rule would be seven, eight, nine? Well, now, then, once the rule is on this dimension, which is the sixth. Six. Okay. Uh, here's the seventh and the eighth. Remember, we talked about this, cha this chaos. Okay. Right. These are dimensions of chaos that segregate. This dimension six from the ninth, where the circle of light, the creator of all, exists. Okay. And what's um, on the right side? Let's talk about that. So on the right side, he talks about these worlds within the world of nine parallel dimensions. So in parallel with our third dimension are nine other dimensions. Okay. So and I related these to the nine mind underworld frequencies because they describe that as well. They see these dimensions and frequencies are correlated. So, does that mean these frequencies here, and here it is in hertz, there's 7.4 hertz up to 12 hertz. And I chose these arbitrarily because I knew they landed in the frame of I'm trying to look for uh, a way to 
correlate with what he and Lundblad have taught and what we know about the EEG measurements of the brain. So the, the reality is, if you could tune in this particular frequency, you could go to this fourth frequency, which would be this dimension. And it's one within the other. Okay, so it's worlds within worlds. So he, what he's saying is these frequencies are within the Earth based on the circumference of the Earth. It's the radius of the Earth. Okay? And when you go all the way up to this one, that would be the surface where we live right now. Is that in the book that I have? Uh, this is... No. Actually, I made this up after I wrote the book. I did this as an instruction. I put it on my... Um, That's good. I put it on my Facebook page, and I put it on my blog, my website. So, so we could find that? Oh, no, absolutely. No. No. <clears throat> Um, also, he talks about the number 13, which is kind of a mystical number. It's the sign of the hidden zodiacal sign of Ophucus, plus it's the floor of the, that the elevator never goes to. Right? It's been demonized, Friday the 13th, and blah, blah, blah. Someone tells about your number 15. What's that? Someone tells about your number 15. I know. I know. It's just superstition. Well, this is actually where it came from, according to the tablets. There were nine dimensions, three natures of man that we just covered before. Plus the infinite nature of the source for total 13. So this is the creator of all's number, is what I'm telling you. So whoever took on the role of God demonized the number 13 to make it an unlucky number. Because they wanted to be the one. Right? And we know that would end. You have that court as well, didn't you? The court. Court. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Tried by juries in 12 and the 1. Ah, interesting. So you have these four yeah. So I, I bring up this yeah. topic, oh, the right. connection right. with Ophucus, who was a snake bearer, healer, who was directed, connected to the teachings of Paul. So supposedly Zeus killed him and put him in the in the heavens as a sign to remember him, but he didn't want him teaching uh, the alchemical lessons of the Hindus, including changing your telomeres, possibly having to turn wine. Interesting, eh? Uh, uh, he talks about a, the fact that we're held in bondage by a frequency vibration. Okay? It was done intentionally by the normal world. So this is the false mercado that can actually entrain you. They don't want, they don't want you to know that this birthright of Yankee equipment and this, this access to energy that we have. So that's been part of this evolution and battle over consciousness since the Garden of Eden, since our first avatar. Is that a vibration of false signals? Uh, yeah. Yes. So there's a there's a proper frequency coming from the flower of life, but they also set up a false one to try to overcome that. So that that uh, that actually goes back to some of these military projects too, like the what happened with the Manhattan Project and a few other things. So they got, uh, wow. I think Project Blue Beam is, might be part of this. Right. Uh, we didn't talk. So here's kind of the energy field of a human, uh, similar to what's shown as a magnetic core. It'll feel like a magnet. Uh, this is actually the shape of the star tetrahedron, so you can okay. see this three-dimensional conjunction of these uh, multi these, these uh, tetrahedrons. The, 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 one, the words right there. The yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. There's the ka, there's the ba. Right. Mm -hmm. What's the mer or the emerging? Uh, it may be the emerging. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, I'll have to look at that word to see what it actually came from. Right. We should have had that picture before we did the meditation. Mm -hmm. The other day, so you guys can see it. Uh, actually, Chris has got it on video, and it's also on my YouTube channel. So you can actually, they give you the pictures and they walk you through it, so you can play it and do it for yourself. So you don't have to. Yeah. It's a really good way to learn it, too. But is that where we're going to, you said we were would be able to listen to what you did for us? Would it be on our computer on YouTube? Is that oh, yeah, 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 but we, I already have, the, this has already been recorded on YouTube. It's recorded well, right now. Yeah, but you. What I mean was, you know, we all sat around and we walked us through the meditation. Right. We can hear that at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where, but where, where is it? Uh, it's on YouTube. Oh, it's on YouTube. Yeah, and we can yeah. send you the link well, to it if you want. I actually have a flash drive right here. Everybody makes that computer on YouTube right now. So I, I brought it with me. It's not online. I have it on the computer. This is another holographic model that I use to kind of make it easier to see. This one shows the lower 14 dimensions. Our with the uh, um, portal, okay, with the outer dimension, layers one, two, three of the Van Allen Bell, or low caps one, two, three, according to where I'm going to roll. Um, here you can see the nine parallel dimensions with our dimension, and it's very much similar to what I showed you in the other diagram, except 
it points it out a little bit differently so you can see this this uh, cymatic vibration that created the law of time and then you've got this law of matter so those are the two things that really come from the greater law in this, in this sense is how does light create matter and hopefully we get a chance to go through this light encoding the reality matrix he talks about reaching the duo how to get through or you will off so that before short time you end up in an out of body experience, go there for six hours and you use it a woo. So I, I so taking these key words and putting them on a little cheat sheet so you have them with me so you can go oh, to preserve my conscious death, this one. To access the uh, out of body, this one. And I used to have some single eight and a half by eleven piece of paper I carried out around to try to memorize. Mm -hmm. And the dark words as well. Go back and sort of write the word down. Thor E. Leal La. Okay, got it. Okay. And then here he talks about how to have an out of body experience. Then he's telling you um, another word in order to cause yourself to have the out of body experience. Okay. And he goes, La Um Il Lagan. So, when you hear that, you may have to try it a few different ways by taking each syllable and maybe doing it like a mantra, not just pronouncing the word. So play with it and see what makes it resonate in your mind. And if this is too hard for you, go get Robert Moreau's book and read mm -hmm. the, um, about chapter 16, I believe it is, where he starts talking about the process to get relaxed, how to get to the borderline dream state, and to do this. That's how I learned it as a 17 year old. And then I saw a loss method. So that one's more familiar to me. And it's kind of an easy thing to lose because you fall asleep and then <laughs> not be able to do it at all, right? So the idea of having a nap before you try it so you're refreshed, possibly being in a seated position. So you're doing it from uh, an upright position where you're not going to fall asleep. But if you're going to lay down and do it, uh, usually being refreshed. So you don't fall asleep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, so the whole idea is staying in a, in a mental state where you visualize something and stay internally, narrowly focused long enough that the body starts going to sleep. But then when you get to that place where you're just at the, at the place where you're experiencing it, but you then unfocus narrowly and allow your, it's almost like staring at something and then allowing your eyes to go unfocused and letting your peripheral vision take over versus your Phobia centralis being focused right on the center. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. This was his next book, and then he you know, wrote another one called Ultimate Journeys, which I haven't gotten all the way through yet. <clears throat> but the first book, oddly enough, talks about legal body, visiting the good lot, and then he tells you what to say when you get there. I am the light, in me is no darkness. Free am I from the bondage of night. Open thou the way of the twelve and the one, so I may pass the realm of wisdom. What is the twelve and the one? Uh, the Twelve Houses of Illusion and the Dew Law. Okay. <laughs> Here's the sit-up method. That's the, I guess, float straight up method. <laughs> this one happens to you, I think, when you end up in REM sleep and you don't even realize that uh, you could potentially leave, leave your body. I've had that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, that one, that one is actually, like, I, I that was my favorite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in, in Robert Perez, you can tell she focus on a point on the ceiling and you sit up reach for it mentally and so that your energy so whatever you think when you're at that borderline dream state will occur mm -hmm. so if you think rise out of the body you're going to rise out of the body oftentimes we stay very close to it because fear is the hardest thing to overcome with this process you know the first few times you may get a, a half second or a second out of it and then over time you get, get longer when you get you realize that when you leave you can come back and anytime you think about going back you immediately come back in. Uh, and he tells you once you get there, there's this other great thought. Do you want me to go back? He tells you there's this, and you're going to be refused by Osiris. Expect the gate guard to just refuse you. Well, how would he know that unless he was the gate guard? <laughs> and he knew this, right? So, uh, can, you, I, can you say it? I am the light. For me, there are, for me are no barriers. Open, I command, by the secret of secrets. Idum Elohim Zaberet Zoradam. Then, if I were to be true, the highest the barriers will open for you. And then go have fun in a room for a while. <laughs> and they have a little recording. I could press a button. Enjoy your success.
Okay, Joe. <laughs> but you're out of your body while you're doing this. The last tablet he says, uh, this is interesting to me. He basically encourages you to win either way to me, my children. Well, it sounds very much like what Jesus was uh, mm. talking about in his, in his allegories as he told them. Okay. And then he states emphatically, I am the key and the way. Mm -hmm. Exactly again. So, so I threw one out to the Bible scholars. Does this sound familiar to you? Oh, you should tell the Christian this does. Oh, no. <laughs> well, especially when you realize what function Jesus was supposed to be performing and what role Paul is doing here to take you out of this enslaved reality and give you eternal life on this world. So now you already know. Well, I already have eternal, <laughs> eternal being, but what level of avatar? Okay. It's sure weird it's the hero's journey. Yeah. 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 I didn't spend a lot of time on that. Now, here I'm going to talk to you about lighting coding and reality. So here's our periodic tables of the elements. There's stibium or antimony that got mixed with gold to turn it into white powder gold. And of course, you've got uh, uh, a very special element of mercury as well. Okay. So the reason I bring this up is imagine you could take these elements somehow run them through a quantum encryption encoding using light and turn it into matter. Because that seems to be what's happening, not only on this planet, but everywhere else too. Right? Now that you realize that the creator of all is in the circle of light and established the law of creation using light, what's the connection? Right? So, <clears throat> so how does light become matter? Well, apparently, according to some process that I summarized here, Actually, a very long document. And I tried to put it into nine steps for you. Mm. Okay? Uh, acknowledge the need to light and code an object. In other words, I want to create a character. Okay? Uh, request the cooperation from all quanta, meaning your holographic handlers that allow you to change through an alchemical process the interaction of the spirit that manifests all matter. Okay? This is, shows up in the alchemist's curriculum. Is that the idea that energy is behind the manifestation of all matter is something you start to believe once you realize this process is accurate. Okay. This was shown to some of the Tibetan monks who were doing it by the scientists who actually went over and visited them. Some of them could actually do this. They demonstrated to one of the Tibetans and the Tibetans did the same thing, but they didn't. They had a different method, but it turns out it's doing the same thing. Okay. Um, focusing on a target. Synthesize the awareness of its targets and so what does a carrot look like? So you formulate the data set and the parameters the best you can in mind what it is you want to create so you have a clear consciousness. Um, you're basically there's what we're being told is there's a quantum encryption encoder built into a human from an energetic standpoint that manifests right from your dantian and an arm's length away from your body. That's what this states. So and it's about you know it's about so if you're thinking of manifesting the carrot right out in front of you, you're thinking about this place right here, and you're focusing your attention on that area to create this object. And then you can walk through this, ask for and accept the cooperation to create it, ask to know when you fully have the data set fully formed such that you're ready to go forward. Do I have all the parameters of what a carrot looks like? Okay. Or a stack of gold, or any other object that you desire. As long as you can come up with a parameter set for it, you can create it. Um, the more familiar things there are to you, uh, the easier it is to do according to teaching. And then you relax and perform this learn mantra. Okay, these particular sounds that I've made up are designed to raise your potential voltage in your body above what's called unity, okay, which is greater than 1.2 volts. The human body can contain very high electrical potential. <laughs> okay, so part of it is, in order to do this process, to raise the electrical potential of the human body above, beyond the normal in order to activate this light encoding matrix. Very, very trippy. Okay, um, and you repeat this step four until you receive this oversink feeling. And I don't know if it's hair standing on the back of your neck for you or just what it is so you can feel you're over 1.2 volts. Somebody, some people may have, have a a digital oscope, but they can connect themselves and say, okay, what voltage am I at right now? It's kind of when you walk back foot, then you go to zero, because you're earthing yourself out. 
Well, that's okay. like, if you're on the rug, probably not. Yeah. If you're on the you're tile, not marshal. If you're actually in the dirt, and it's moist, good connection, like a grounding rod. Isn't that good? Because I'm yeah. using it. No, that's good. No, that's good. Well, the bottom part is one potential. Remember, we're, we're talking about a negative pole down here and a positive pole up here. Okay, uh, repeat it until you, you uh, get the knowingness of overstand. Tell the body to continue increasing the capacities beyond this threshold. Okay, that's the next part. So I put all the verbs kind of in bold, so you can see what it, where you have to do something. Right? <laughs> okay. Um, and then you're going to shift your intention from a narrow internal focus on this thing you're trying to manifest into a broad internal, kind of like letting your eyes form focus, and uh, keep amplifying this overseeing feeling. Okay. So it kind of feels like Qi, anybody's ever played with Tai Chi or Qi Gong or even, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So it feels a lot like that. Now this cage area is the area of arms that go right through the body where you're trying to manifest this thing. Mm -hmm. okay. and, uh, and this is your uh, quantum potential encoder that's built into you that's using light through you and energy to manifest something in the material world. Isn't that true? Okay. So at this point, uh, once you have gotten above oversync and you feel like you're ready to do this, I guess you just uh, keep calm, manifest it, and then once it appears, you reach down and retrieve it. And then thank the quanta for their cooperation. And it, the, it, in the documents, it talks about um, not desiring something that isn't necessary for you. So if you thought, you know, 800 pounds of gold is necessary for you. The quantum may disagree depending on your power. So, so starting out with pragmatic things that are part of your mission gives you a lot more potential to make it happen. I'm still practicing this. Where do we have this chart anywhere? Um, you don't, but I'm going to give it to you. And actually, there's a whole document that was written to support this, and I just gave you the summary. Are you going to email that to us? Sure. I would love to see that. But just know, yeah, I will. Stay in touch with me, I'll give it to you. Just know that this is unique to me. So you got to sit down and come up with about 30 of these and maybe make you a, you know, a set of beads and each one has a word, you go through it. It's like a mantra in order to, and those sounds have a lot to do with uh, resonating your internal frequency so that you can achieve mm -hmm. over sync you. Just this is going to take a lot of practice. You may never even achieve this in your lifetime, but if you do, you'll we'll probably make a video. Way to build your own uh, energy. Exactly. So that's what well, Chris and I were working on. That's <laughs> one of the reasons why we're focusing on our own internal energy. Because listen, this is power built on right here. Remember from the document, creating, yeah. manifesting with your mind. This is it. But it's on USB. What's that? It's on USB. Well, I'm going to put this in a PDF, and I'll even give you the source document if you're inclined to read it. It's very heavy science. So. It was hard. It was hard for me to coalesce this. Down. I'd be happy with this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That'll do. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Let's see where we are here. You might be on to the next part. Okay, how can we pass and present? I'm not going to spend too much on this. We've talked a lot about it. So, the Magi Garden in Egypt from Terror is the ball. It's so does Magnus Garden in Europe. Uh, Hermeticism and Gnosticism are very interesting for me because they're both uh, from ball. See what else we can cover here. I thought this was interesting. If you want to go look at Exodus 32 20. These two authors, in particular this one, uh, this is a great, easy read about the alchemist. Uh, it really will hit you between the eyes and inspire you to continue your process of initiation with, with the alchemist. And this guy, uh, mm -hmm. has, it's a hardcore book about alchemy where he talks about the prerequisites to have this experience, which is the golden thread for all time is this wisdom, this knowledge, is that the seekers get access to this and they find out about it more or So when well, you start having an experience with the premier alchemist Paul himself, uh, there'll be no denying that you're on that path. And it's, uh, it's an amazing path. What's the title of Pat Paolo's book? Uh, Paolo Cohelo's book is the alchemist. I have a picture of both of books here, I think. What's it called? I'll show that. Up. I have a picture of the books on here. Oh, okay. okay, there was Thoth in his tarot cards where he encoded the continuous law of creation into a, a game of dice. Okay, it became our 52 card deck. Right. Well, 
that's why you did it. So those that are interested in studying uh, the tarot, I, I would recommend uh, Le Balier's book, Genesis of the Cosmos. Very profound book where he dives very deep into uh, what each of these mean. I didn't realize the tarot is that old. Mm -hmm. the Egyptian, it's, it's the Egyptian tarot. Yeah. So basically it's the continuous laws of creation from the scientists in Egypt that encapsulated them in these symbolic terms. I always thought it was like a fortune teller name thing. Who made okay. those cups? Well, there's different versions of it. This was the best one, sir? Um, I actually like the Egyptian one better than the European version. Uh, the European ones look different to me than the Egyptian ones. Are they made by a special company? Uh, first of all, you can just go online and look and see. They're actually all online. You don't even really need to buy them if you don't want to. But, but I like the ones in uh, Le Valier's book, Genesis of the Cosmos. Because he talks specifically about the laws of continuous creation that are connected in fact to the of Isis, Osiris, or its myth. Okay. So the idea of law of continuous creation. Now think about what I just showed you, the light encoding the reality matrix. And he's using this process and power of real time to create. And along comes the destroyer to wipe it out. So they always operate in, they're working together to create a balance between creation and destruction. Kind of like Shiva and, is it Brahma? Mm -hmm. yeah. Creating and destroying. No, creating and destroying. <laughs> creating and destroying. Uh, there was a picture of Thoth with his caduceus. Notice the Egyptian palm up there and the sign for Mercury on top. <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, Gnosticism, if you ever look into that, you realize they're talking about the kingdom of heaven is in, the external world is controlled by dark lords, and you can transmit it very much exactly like what was taught in the other Talmuds. I think that I think that's why they ended up getting <laughs> railroaded by the, mid, the Middle Ages church, because they were connected to the fall. I'm not going to go too much into this, but uh, those are they're into this, starting out with John Ballard's work and, and going through uh, all of these geometries and how they evolve from the flower of life is very interesting to me, it may not be to you, but uh, the idea of using sound, cybernetics, and the platonic solids to create matter is also there. So all of this ties back into the laws of creation of matter. As far as I'm um, we have significant connections back to Atlantis and their connections to the children of Lamech, who took this Atlantean wisdom and encoded it on two pillars, one impervious to water and one impervious to fire. This got perverted in Europe to uh, being the offspring of the Enochian tradition instead of the Lamech tradition, which broke this link back to Paul the Alchemist in intention. So I think the Masons originally were started by Paul. He was the great architect, showing the compass and the ruler. But because of the infiltration by the Emelites through the Illuminati, um, They've been at war. So these secret societies going back and forth and infiltrating, it makes it very, very included to uh, who you're involved with, right? But we know the Illuminati are venerating Lucifer. Now, is that good or bad? Lucifer means bearer of life. Mm -hmm. good or bad? So who is telling me about that book, Lucifer's Hammer? Um, that's Patricia. Patricia, yeah. So, so for some reason, there's something in that that's important for me. And I kind of caught me today, and that's but there is a direct connection between the Masons, alchemy, and fall. Just like and I think I showed you, I think I'll show you here a little later if you look at the streets of Washington, D.C., Boston, for a yeah, ground, yeah. and right there. Yeah. Uh, this was pretty neat recently. We're kind of getting into what's going on over but these, They recently found some poor chalk. <laughs> these divers did the needle. So, and it turns out that metal is not even on the periodic table. Because <laughs> in the documents they describe having mined it all out of Atlantis and it was gone by the time the Greeks came around. So that's a mystical metal? Or some crazy metal that they were making uh, rest plates out of. It's quite, quite it has amazing properties as well. An alloy of some sort. Yeah. Well, this particular one they found, I think it was an alloy. It wasn't a real thing, but it was marketed as having found the <laughs> legendary metal of Atlantis. The twin pillars in Atlantis were supposed to be made from poor chocolate. I don't know why it was in their temples of life. Where did he get that picture?
I got it offline, but I really liked it. <laughs> oh, look at the, uh, look at the yeah, picture. Not, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fall off of there, uh, laying it all out for a good view. So this is a, an alchemical uh, allusion back, way back in history to uh, smelting gold, adding antimony, and creating this talcum-like powder that has amazing superconductive properties. Uh, there's a couple of products that Krista makes. Uh, one of them is, is an M3 and one's an M1. So we've got, so M has to do with the uh, monoatomic element source. And then you, you'll find that that stands for orbital rearranged monoatomic element. It's the basis. We get told, we, get, we like the hero story over and over and over and over again. Guess what? Because it was encoded in all of us to be the hero in our path. It takes courage to overcome your darkness, right? So, uh, and that's why I think we're drawn to the, the hero stories over and over again. We, you know, all the different contexts we've done. I think the Hunger Games pushes this concept of the holographic limits to its to a boundary such that entities are ant manifested into the reality that can actually kill you. Right? So all of a sudden, you know, you start thinking about the light encoded to the reality matrix. Is this possible? <laughs> and if that's true, then they can do it with those entities, then you're going to have to target. They're operating against the same parameters that you are. Um, and I thought this was a really neat one. They're exploring these worlds and these laws and these concepts that we've been talking about. Being in a simulator while you thought you were creating a simulator and then find out you're in a simulator as well. That's pretty neat. Uh, the 13th floor is a movie that uh, I really recommend. You know, it's a few years old. And here's that number 13. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so what is interesting is that I found out writing the simulator that what that is. So whatever is propelling us to be interested in something, it's probably because it's deep within us, it's formulated for us to get out of the state we're in or work a lesson or move beyond the, where we are in gravity. And in general, I come up with a definition of that. It's, it's interesting. What is interesting to us what, what catalyzes us to focus our awareness on an entity or object is uh, a concept or event that has the potential to change your fate and your destiny. Meaning, it could call it trigger fight or flight, or it could cause you to relate some higher pathway for you, whether you know it or not at the time, as a synchronicity to get where you want to be. Okay, so pay attention to what you're paying attention to, what's interesting, because it's important. And it's different for you than it is for you. Though. So that's what it starts exposing this truth is a pathless land for you. It's different for everybody. Everybody's their own. Exactly. Um, Love this book. Uh, Scientific America came around just recently where it was equating the uh, multi dimensional universe with the string theory map, and now it correlates exactly with what Bob told us nine dimension reality, one dimension of time. We saw that in our news. We got that. Uh, I real quickly go through and show you how you can use an object oriented program to create a template for an entity to throw in your simulator and give it the parameters to have it choose light over darkness or uh, <laughs> do whatever. Okay, so there's a simple class for I can do instances of that and all these entities in my simulator and send them on their missions. Okay, so this is how. Object learning program allows you to do that. I'm, I'm going faster. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, here's a way that you can model an algorithm of a population for it to evolve. We used to do this in artificial intelligence called genetic algorithms. We have a population, uh, you have a fitness evaluation function to determine whether it gets to stay in the game. New Atlantis, if you read uh, Thomas, uh, was it Bacon? He wrote a, a book on Atlanta, uh, New Atlantis, and clearly identified the connection from Egypt to establishing it in America. So it, it has a significant <laughs> precedence, and if you look at what some of the early founders in America did, they were clearly on board with us. 
Jared Tonic from Diamond tells us why we're in the playoffs. We did Albert Pike's prediction today in 1971 in the last presentation. So basically, he predicted World War III, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and atheism will all be destroyed in this third war. That's his prediction. At least that's what Albert Pike wanted in order for this Luciferian document to be presented as the only alternative. It doesn't sound like a very positive way to lead people to the light, does it? Not to me. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, Jared Diamond's book, a Collapse. Uh, notice what's uh, in the picture. Quite interesting. And this one actually, while I was, I was reading that book, while I was on my way to Istanbul, <laughs> uh, really blew my mind to realize that I was stepping back into the old reality. Uh, one of my heroes, Paul Hellier. You have to listen to some of his videos where he talks about the Malaya hospitality books that this guy wrote. He was out at Indian Springs, Nevada, having encounters with the Anunnaki for over two years. He, they were actually studying him, he wasn't studying them. He was a apprenticeship. He, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, this ex Secretary of Defense who served Canada for 23 years came out in a 25 minute video in front of Congress and spilled the beans on it. So basically, the bottom line is. They've been in the United States since the end of World War II and establishing all foreign policy and all, all predications of the United States. So now you see uh, what kind of entities are there. I'm not happy. And I would be very destructive. See, the thing is that that's happened already. I mean, how many people believe? Yeah. How many people believe an honorable guy like this until you listen to him and see if your spirit mm -hmm. and Actually, he so inspired me once I was at the point ready to publish my book when I heard him speak. I put him on the back of the book and I was like, if he's willing to step out and say it, and risk like I do too. And I've listened to Charles Hall, he's not a very good speaker, but per se, in terms of audience, his content is great, but you probably never heard of him because of that. He wrote five books. Um, what are the new world order people capable of? Weather modification, projecting images uh, from satellite and you making you think it's God or whatever, or giant. Or so, your perception of reality and what really is going on is very much being manipulated. And I can't give you an idea of how a hologram is created. That's supposed to be how they're going to sell um, <clears throat> the fake alien invasion? <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, Third World War, I believe it's happening right now. Very, very cool, especially when you see stun grenades being thrown back and forth. Y'all like some awesome. How come, why did the world buy into this script? I mean, what power did he have to write that and do it? You know, I mean... Probably because they were in control of that zodiacal house or whatever they said. So right. while you had control, you see how many people you could get to go with you versus the ones who went with the opposing team. It's like it's like a two-party vote, right? He writes this up and hands it out. <laughs> <laughs> Explain to that. Right. Yeah, so I kind of went over some of the symbolism in the world, kind of, kind of bringing to the modern time right now what's going on. Trying to get him shown up on MH370 to 317, be blown out of the sky. Well, who's Lord of the Air? Animal, right now. So he's smearing his brother by doing that. So I was wondering how he could be. We've got faith and energy weapons, all kinds of things. Listen, you know, modern aircraft type. Right? Have an anti uh, hijacking capability, so that they can be taken over from a remote location and flown so the pilot has no interaction. You know that? Yet, at the same time, this is happening. Who did that? This is the Malaysian aircraft that oh, came yeah. up missing and they're just now finding pieces with it, yeah. washing up onto uh, that oh. island that was used in the series of Lost or what was it? Survivor? <laughs> and showing up over there. Yeah. So, and then 317 is the one shot down over Ukraine and blamed on Russia. In order to yeah. Get God, put the hook in the jaw of God and draw him into this world war. So right. that's happening. Right. ISIS, now it's a group of barbarians that are destroying civilization, where she was the mother of humanity. <laughs> that's really great. Right. Um, thought that his caduceus were overtaken by fall in Western medicine, and even in the UK, where it's cutting in drugs there just like it is here. Well, that has nothing to do with the alchemical transformation of your human energy body, okay? Not one iota. Okay. Um, look at what happened to the inverted star that 
shows up on all our flags. All of a sudden, now it's a pentagram associated with some evil church of Satan. Right. Well, that was never the case in the past. Right. Until the Middle Ages. And in Old Sight of the Eagle, propagating war and destruction all over, including the double headed eagle of Apollo, that now is on uh, some flags that we didn't have before. So whenever you see that sign, uh, that's an original sign. There's the Georgia Guidestones. Uh, if you want to look into that, so <laughs> this is a way to communicate to all the players in New World Order what's going on. 2014, that cube was put in, showed, and broken. So there's serious milestones being achieved by that organization right now. We know what their Ten Commandments are. Uh, probably the most disturbing one is the fact that they want to cut seven point. Three billion people down to 500 million. Mm -hmm. The rest of these, I'll let you read them. Uh, I don't really disagree with a lot of them. Wilcock is this Ted Turner. Yeah, well, he's involved as so well. I think Bill Gates is involved. I would tell all, all those creeps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the population control people. Yeah, the vaccine guys. Yeah, so I, here's a Ukraine's trident on this flag before they were invaded by the Nazis, right? It fomented that violence and that coup that took place in Kiev. Incredible. Um, there's a double-headed eagle that now is showing up on the flag. There's Malaysia with the trident on it. Okay. Here's the double-headed ego eagle that shows up in the 33rd degree Masons. Well, it wasn't there before. So I believe in the Illuminati infiltrated the Masons. That's when Nurka Apollo showed up as the, as the god of uh, that organization. Uh, there's our United States seal and animals symbol of the eagle on there. This was the old Russian flag with a sickle and a hammer showed up on a coin, a Roman coin with the caduceus on the back, which I didn't quite understand what the sickle meant on there, unless it meant a harvest. But then they changed their flag recently, and here's uh, St. George killing the dragon. The dragon was a sign for St. Sheeta. And these are the double-headed eagles of uh, Minerva, who was Apollo and his son. And he was the one that fired the nuke in Mesopotamia, blew up the Sapar space board. Okay, so he's a this is now Russia's flag. This used to be the flag. Oh, yeah, of they got lips. So, what happened? Lips so, you st yeah. start to try to track down where these players are moving around so you can keep your finger on the yeah. pulse of who's where and when. Okay. What's happening very quickly? Oh. Oh. Is the dragon a, a sign of uh, England? Well, the dragon and the serpent were signs of kingship that went yeah. all the way back to Mesopotamia. They were turned into something evil, right? So, and then also, um, they like, um, let's just jump right there before we go. So, go ahead. So, anyway, I think I'm getting you guys over time. I'm not going to start with them. So, uh, so looking at these crazy models of shifting relationships kind of gives you an indication of how they're using the simulator for us to see these different models. Okay. Uh, the United States was on, uh, on the same team as Russia World War I. You can see the alliance. World War II. Um, they were again on the same team. Of course, they hit the Cold War after that. Now we're working out. Okay. So this whole relationship between these two superpowers, which was talked about by Albert Pike, is quite amazing. Here it is happening right before our eyes, just like you stated. All right. The uh, Cold War ended in 1991. Whatever it happened. So, amazing. so uh, it's really curious what uh, what they're trying to achieve by showing us these different. But I personally think that Thaw and Enki are working with Russia right now, and Enlil and Apollo and Minerva. And the Enlilites are occupying America. And it's kind of a little bit of a war with me. But actually, I believe the offspring of Enlil in the United States in the end of World War II. So when this final war is over, men will seek the eternal goal of achieving higher consciousness and ascendancy as it was in Atlantis. Isn't that interesting? Well, let's hope that that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I talk about some of the new things that are available now. We won't spend too much time on this. Probably the penultimate is energy generation as far as I'm concerned, the sustainable living techniques. Like a uh, Searle effect generator or all these other technologies like what Tesla introduced us to. There's infinite energy that we don't need to be charged for it through a wire. Okay. So I talk about some of these things. We'll just go quickly, very quickly. Almost done. 
anti-gravity transport. You're starting to see that. That's really crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a really neat video of what's going on in China where they were driving down the street in one of these things. Very good and neat. Uh, sustainable food sources. There's your serial effect generator. It's almost commercialized from what we can tell. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Love to have one. <laughs> yeah, then, but then you charge this performance and stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, there's 15 kilowatts of energy from a box that time. Um, I'm sure you can't actually get it. Where? <laughs> no, no, you can. You can? Yeah, you can use them. I can order 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 them. Yeah, see, well, yeah, see I, I believe you can order them. He's one of the first people to be able to commercial. Here's this Boeing pad on the energy shield I've told you about. So now we're actually able to do what Thoth was talking about, building a shield from the perimeter by concentrating the energy of all the one. We can do that now. <laughs> Here's a pad on the space elevator. It's 12 miles tall. Thothmaps.com. So it looks like Thoth may possibly be the NK. <laughs> or at least have some company he started. Thoth <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah. Uh, uh, I talk about some changes that I would make. Uh, uh, I won't read these are in the book, but uh, energy independence, anti gravity transportation, what else? free food, personal responsibility. Uh, get rid of the chicken that's ridiculous, unless you can prove to me that this genetic modification is not harmful. But if it yeah. creates more food for people than it does to harm them, Okay. Somehow, <laughs> genetic modification turns into something evil. So it never, totally doesn't happen. <laughs> totally <laughs> right. Um, sustainable housing. I really like the idea of an earth shield, where you're generating your own electricity, uh, your own water, and not polluting. Uh, you know, all this. You know, ultimately, just seeking the goal. That's what's done on the last. I think I would like to see that versus what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to kill off half the planet. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is true. I know. It's such a bummer. Yeah. Well, in the Bible, it talks about turning uh, swords into plowshares. Is that what's going on with the world? It's also a thing. It's healthcare. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> that gets me sad. Uh, and, you know, really, the assessing need for life, the, uh, the Bible says the lion will lay down with the lamb. Well, genetically, if you were in control of all the lamb, you could specify that the life would not be the lamb. So, I. I personally would make that change. Because, you know, when you see an animal eating another animal, is that how primitive man decided it's okay to do that too? Probably. Uh, let's, we're going to jump probably right to finding your way out here and then finish up. There's your twin flame discussion from the Emerald Tablet. And I have to tell you, uh, had I not experienced in this life, I think I would have been. Uh, a lesser being, and the fact that I found my twin flame and that we get to experience that every day is something that I can't describe to someone else. It's, it's just natural. So, I'm very lucky. <laughs> um, here's your two prerequisites for having the alchemical experience. Subjugate that ego and purify your consciousness, whatever that means for you. For me, just real quickly, it means nothing that suppresses my human energy. And for me, that's alcohol. It doesn't do anything good for me. I believe that virtual relationships are harsh, and that includes any form of pornography. I don't, I don't believe that real men don't do pornography in my book. That's what I told my kids, and you know, whatever they need to do. But, you know, have I been down that path yet? Yeah, but it didn't take me to a higher place. So if it's not taking me a higher place, it's in my way. Yes. And, and, and I'm not perfect. I still have things that I'm overcoming. I probably will to the day I give up the same <laughs> just like all of us. But, Trying to go in the right direction. Snickers are on the Snickers are accessible at the Oxford station. <laughs> we don't have 7 Elevens here, we have Oxford station. They're in the, <laughs> in the top shelf. <laughs> uh, so we talked we talk about this human energy deal and finding the way inside. The kings and the So go in there. That, so this is makes you think about should I go do the bucket list or go inside and find my way out? Mm -hmm. That's not to say you don't do things like that. Balancing it with this. Because we live in a physical reality right now. And it's, it's a physical world. Like Madonna said. <laughs> Material world. Uh, I love this movie. If you haven't seen it, Jason Nargonauts, the 1963 version. 
Wow. So in this scene where he's in the temple uh, and has an encounter with this, this priest who turns into Hermes and takes him up to the Olympian Council to meet the players. Mm -hmm. um, fascinating if you haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Please watch this whole 1962 movie. At least if you get through this part at the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. Really, really inspiring. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that movie it says, why are the gods have us enslaved in this reality? Okay. And expose us to these desires to be either powerful or, you know, you remember the Caesar's fall, was over meaning to the pride and ambition. Mm -hmm. so where did, who was fanning the flame of those desires that destroyed it? Well, the God, uh, in that movie, Hera, or I believe it's Zeus's wife, Hera, tells Jason that the reason that they are exposed to this is so the gods may know man and man may know himself. Very profound. Yeah, it is profound. Very profound. It's done better in the movie, and I wrote this in my book so you can see that. It's a neat part of my movie. And it's talking about where the uh, Polias was just invading the Thessalonian kingdom to overtake this rulership, and he killed these people and then killed the sons of and daughter of the king in order to make sure that he, his offspring would be the ruler. He wanted to challenge. And, uh, so that's when she said, why? He goes, but Zeus told me this, you know, you did it yourself. Well, why? So that the man may know himself, and the gods may know you. The gods may know you, and then they may know you. So it's, it's an evolution of consciousness. Mm -hmm. that's okay, so he gives some prophecies in chapter 12. Uh, we're all going to become uh, like, we're all going to move back to the life. Talk about great warfare. I think it's happening between us right now. And as soon as all that's over, apparently this new age of Aquarius is allowed to roll out. Well, we're very close since now we're in the first degree of Aquarius. It's happening. It's happening right now. Yeah, it's happening. You, you think it was going to happen all, all at once, but no. Let's see what no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So in the, the idea of this tribulation in, in the Bible, it talks about it taking seven years. For this transition to happen. Well, when did that start? This is swoopy shit. Mm, I know, I know. So where? So the idea of continuing your avatar mission in this current form, we want to do that. All life wants to preserve its own life. But there may only be safer places. So, you know, it's your time, it's your time. And I think, uh, I think I'm okay with that. So, yeah. what better place to ascend from? Like <laughs> <laughs> you think I planned to be here, but I was just going down just in case, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. You look down the side of the dark forces. Yeah. So they'll they'll stop. So when the intervention comes, they'll stop the strife, and hopefully the lands will rise. The age of light will be unfolded, and the brothers of light will banish the darkness, and will be you know pursuing the goal of higher evolution of consciousness, like uh, we were in the last. Be nice if we don't have to drive the whole planet back to zero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, here's some more of the prophecies that he, uh, he talks about. So we'll all essentially end up on a plane where we can merge with uh, the uh, source of it all. It calls us a perfect plane in the cosmos. We move forward to a place in the stars. Does that mean the moment we're right when we become gods and get our own planets? <laughs> It seems to, it seems to be on something. Okay, we're just about done here. Okay, so, bottom line is, you're responsible for your state of reality. If you fan the flames of your ball field and overcome the illusion, you have a very good chance of ascending, as far as I'm concerned. So, focus on your energy and transmute the darkness, because the more, the closer you get to the goal, Probably the most darkness than before on your path. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I think we're almost done. Uh, now, hopefully, you see that the light and putting your out is a very real thing, that uh, all matter is created. So, let's see, we've got a couple more slides to go. So, uh, he tells us that we need a way to meet. In other words, now's the time to go ahead and have a written test. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't see your name, that's funny. <laughs> All right, I think this is last. So, questions, comments?
There's it's that creator of all in the circle of life. Uh, here was the great void before he implemented the law of time and the law of creation. And over here you can see this is a uh, without the uh, manifestation of these. Okay? So I drew a line in the middle. And also so that I could segregate off the nine worlds in the world. So if you start out here on Earth, let's go start here first. Um, you have our prison planet with our three layers of the Van Allen belts around it. At the edge of the third layer is the axis of the duot. So this is two dimensions. Here we're in third dimension. This axis point is fourth. That is the fifth. And from this side, there are 15 um, connections from here to the sixth dimension where they say Rulu is. And they can come and go through this portal that Osiris is guarding uh, through any of these 15 connections here. Um, you can see, uh, I made it kind of fun to stop and go. If you've got the ball and the key and you know those words that he gives you, you're allowed to go to Arulu for a six hour turn, then you're out of body to experience it. That's what he tells you. Can't go permanently until you lose your body and blah, blah, blah. But right now, you got the opportunity to use an out of body experience with the key that's given to these tablets and visit that place. So Arulu would be sent right now. Well, now then, one the rulers on this dimension, which is the sixth. Six. Okay. Uh, here's the seventh and the eighth. Remember, we talked about this, cha this chaos. Okay, right. these are dimensions of chaos that segregate this dimension six from the ninth, where the circle of light, the creator of all, exists. Okay. And what's um, on the right side? Let's talk about that. So on the right side, he talks about these worlds within worlds of nine parallel dimensions. So in parallel. With our third dimension are nine other dimensions. Okay. So, and I related these to the nine mind underworld frequencies because they describe that as well. They see these dimensions and frequencies are correlated. So, does that mean these frequencies here, and here it is in hertz, there's seven point four hertz up to 12 hertz. And I chose these arbitrarily because I knew they landed in the frame rate region. I'm trying to look for uh, a way to correlate with what he and Lundle have taught and what we know about the EEG measurements of the brain. So the, the reality is, if you could tune in this particular frequency, you could go to the multiple instances of him talking about his tradition that coincide with what the dweller told him to do, slide him in, his trip back to uh, the guru when he met Anu and <laughs> came back and what his mission was relative to those primitive workers. Mm -hmm. Now that, to me, was probably one of the most profound discoveries I ever had. Was, you know, it's part of the most fundamental questions. Who we are, where do we come from, what's life mean, and where are we going? You know, so it answered several of those for me. Okay. Um, he gives us a warning this tablet, calling on without it. It's not seeking wisdom. It may revoke the portal access perfectly. Well, that's kind of a scary thing. Not sure you have to be. You? Five nines. <laughs> I am five nine, nine, nine. No. <laughs> um, So, um, we talked about the ball as, a, as a, one of the first processes to begin to fan this flame so that you start taking on more of your energy body and ultimately become a light being. I think that's the progression. That's our job. Turn lightning into lemony. Don't expect it to be an easy path. And the more intense of a Mission you have, probably more darkness to be working. You know, talks about composition, man, physical, astral, mental. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this thing. I'm going to probably just go through this very quickly. But El Casa talks about the energy flowing through your human antenna, your bones, which no one ever talks about, especially in Western medicine. But the idea that you are a human antenna, a meat motor. Coincides with this uh, with this tablet of diet. That'll be prime. Yeah. yeah. Mine's got three natures. This is ingrained in you to carry the will of the great one, arbiter of cause and arbiter of effect. So you not only cause your reality, but you get to arbiter the effect of it as well. <laughs> I like that. Your spiritual self crosses all nine dimensions. Here is a holographic a different model than I had earlier in the diagram to kind of explain everything that follows in these emerald tablets relative to dimensions, portals, uh, worlds within worlds, 
and the uh, layers that seem to coincide with our band warm up. So let's start again. This fourth frequency, which will be this dimension. Right. And it's one within the other. Okay, so it's worlds within worlds. So he, what he's saying is these frequencies are within the Earth based on the circumference of the Earth. Use the radius of the Earth. Okay? And when you go all the way out to this one, that would be the surface where we live right now. Is that an important bit diagram? Uh, this is. No. Actually, I made this up after I wrote the book. Actually, okay, this is an instruction. Okay. I put it on my. Um, That's good. I put it on my Facebook page and I put it on my blog and my website. So, so you could find that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, he talks about the number 13, which is kind of a mystical number. It was the sign of the hidden zodiacal sign of Ophucus, plus it's the floor of the, the, the elevator never goes to. Right? Mm -hmm. It's been demonized. Friday the 13th, and blah, blah, blah. So it's not funny. I'm 15. What's that? It's not funny. I'm I know. I know, it's a superstition thing. Well, this is actually where it came from, according to the immortality. There were nine dimensions, three natures of man that we just covered before, plus the infinite nature of the source for total 13. So this is the greater of all's number, is what I'm telling you. So whoever took on the role of God demonized the number 13 to make it an unlucky number. Because they wanted to be there, right? And we know that would end. You guys like cult as well, didn't you? Cult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tried by juries yeah. number one. Ah, yeah. interesting. So, yeah. so I, I bring up this yeah. topic. Oh, so the connection yeah. with Ophucus, who was a snake bearer healer, who was directly connected to the teachings of Paul. So supposedly Zeus killed him and put him in the in the heavens as a sign to remember him, but he didn't want him teaching the alchemical lessons of the Hindus, including changing your telomeres, possibly having Interesting, eh? Uh, uh, he talks about a the fact that we're held in bondage by our frequency vibration. Okay? It was done intentionally by the Dharma Lords. This is the false mercology that can actually entrain you. They don't want they don't want you to know this birthright and inky put them in this, this access to energy that we have right now. So that's been part of this evolution and battle over consciousness since the Garden of Eden, since our first avatar. He starts talking about these really pretty profound principles about the greater of all and the constructs of all graphic reality. And, um, <clears throat> he's telling you these universal principles attributed to God. Like I said, this is the first time he uses that term. That's, a, that's such an overused term. And there's thousands of different labels of God. There's actually 3,000 plus religions of the world. <laughs> so, which God are you talking about? So, whenever I hear the word God, it usually just sends my hackles off. So mm -hmm. you call it the creator of all, where, you know, it's like, well, that's hard to have another label more than that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or the infinite, you know, something like that. And it makes it much more good. So, source of all life, source of all good, source of all power. And so, so these sequences of threes keep showing up relative to this, which is quite interesting. Think about a trident with three prongs. Mm -hmm. Three colonies. Power, wisdom, and love. And as a master who's ascended, you're given three powers. But in order to be in conjunction with that, to transmute evil, assist good, and use discrimination. I, I see <clears throat> this is probably what's achievable for us right now is, you know, is doing exactly that. Transmuting evil doesn't mean turning the other cheek, that means converting it from dark into light. Much harder than I thought it was interesting to bring that up. The circle of light is where God, only God dwells. Okay, this is in the ninth dimension, you'll see them there. In the circle of chaos, uh, very close that uh, they talk about between their home and Arulu in the sixth dimension, seventh and eighth are chaos, and then the ninth. So there's this chaotic place that's separate. It's like the, the energy shield to keep everyone out from it. Very interesting. And uh, of course, this is affiliated with the chaos of call and the illusion, whereas awareness is affiliated with fall as eternal spirit of man. What does that mean, the chaos from the control to things? No order. Think of darkness as chaos and order. So I try to come down to chaos. Um, here are the problems for us in getting out of the simulator. No motivation to obtain knowledge. Do you think that? 
Yeah. <laughs> it's important. Wisdom and knowledge are the, are the ultimate. Mm-hmm. Um, he's talking about atheism. Not even concerned about or seeing the order of things to be able to equate this with the great. So, atheistic beliefs and attachment to evil. If you, pref- if you prefer doing evil over fighting a way to transmute darkness, then you're going to get more of a core in your path. Here we go. <coughs> Uh, this one's quite interesting to me. That even if you somehow get past the Dewey Watt on your way to a room, if you want to go visit, if you somehow sneak through it, then your comment, whatever he's telling you, is better to be consumed by fire than <coughs> wasting the trail and then evaluate your soul. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> right? I think that he's always going to be nice and everything you want to see. No, you could get just it's a Well, think about how many levels there are in the evolution of consciousness. I think there are thousands of them. Well, I'll say that's good today, I'm not going to talk about this. This is not a very good talk about that either. Oh, I, I mm-hmm. love this cinematic unveiling of Poseidon when he demonstrates the first cause on this fire and flames come out. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and then he animates thoughts of all yours. This is just, that's really one of my favorite ones. I love reading that one in, uh, in the audio book. Yeah, you get That must be exhausting for you. I was thinking about that when you have to read it. It was exhausting. Actually, actually, it's just emotionally taxing too. Oh, emotionally, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Highs and lows, and I was experiencing a lot. Probably was sleep. In the recording, your energy is, is I know it's how it Your energy is always on the positive to that whole thing. But it's really, really. Well, I think I was, I mean, the fact that I wrote the book in four months and then yeah. did the audio book a couple of weeks after I released the book, I think mean, it was like, wow, just boom, boom, boom. Doing the audio book, I think it was. Actually, all of the mistakes in the editing and the audio was. Yeah. Um, he, he visits a Rulo in the 14th tablet, talks about seeing people who have ascended there, eight of them were permitted to be there. So, the idea that we can go there permanently or temporarily is quite interesting. Is a Rulo a plane? It, it seems to be a plane in the sixth dimension and possibly has material planets there as well. Because he describes homes there and guards and lots of things. <clears throat> and it was interesting in here where he talks about renouncing his birthright to go back there in order to choose to hang out with us hairy barbarians and try to wake us up. So the 